This fucking Pope makes the news twice last week in the bit where he reduced the punishment for pedophile priests pissed me off second most. Now, to be fair, it was the worst of the two stories, even if it was completely unsurprising. Turns out, through his entire tenure, Pope Franny May has been doling out some mighty lenient punishment for the kitty fuckers in his flock, and that's compared even to the paragon of evil that preceded him. As bad as he was, Benedict at least defrocked priests when they were caught with their dicks and kids, and we all said, hey, how about jail, huh? How about you turn them over to whatever third world shithole they were diddling the youngsters in in the first place to face the same kind of punishment their victims would face for stealing a loaf of bread. But apparently that was a strict pope because Pope Franny Pack isn't even willing to do that. And that's evidenced by a bunch of stories that hit the press last week, prompted no doubt by the case of Reverend Mauro Zoli. Now, here we got a Catholic priest who is a known pedophile, gets clemency from the Pope, goes back out in the world, fucks more kids at another Catholic church. Now, according to numerous press reports, this is only one of many cases where the Pope decided to overrule the advice of the, uh, the, the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith and reduce the sentences of known pederasts. This, despite publicly advocating zero tolerance and tougher penalties from day one, this duplicitous asshole who promotes the idea that people who choose the wrong God door on let's make a deal deserve to burn in hell for eternity is now going to hide behind the word mercy to justify letting priests get away with raping kids. And if there is one area where you can count on the mainstream media to live up to Donald Trump's billing of them, it's when they're talking about the fucking pope. Hell, I saw an ABC News report that seemed to suggest that the real risk of letting known child fuckers back into the churches to fuck children again is that it could, quote, come back to embarrass the church, end quote. But at least they're reporting on it, right? I, I mean, at least they seem to recognize that the Pope's the bad guy in this story. They may be soft peddling an unspeakably evil action, but at least they're hitting on the right half of the morality spectrum. And that's why it's the story that pissed me off second most. In terms of actions taken, again, yes, this is the worst of the two. But in terms of media reporting, the story that really pissed me off last week came out a couple of days earlier when the media started sucking the Pope's dick for suggesting that it would be better to be an atheist than a hypocritical Catholic. Be better to be an atheist than a Catholic who cheats his employees and launders money. Now, despite the belittling formulation of that thought, media outlets around the world seem to think that this is yet another example of how tolerant and enlightened this pope is. Now, I would like to think that the press would universally recognize the insult if you substituted any other minority, right? And maybe not Breitbart, but if, if, if he'd said, you'd be better off being a black than a hypocritical white, or you'd be better off being a gay than a hypocritical straight. Can't imagine anybody would see that as a laudable statement. Hell, we don't even have to move that far down the substitution scale, do we? If it used any other category of religious belief, it would scream bigotry to any casual observer. If he said, well, you'd be better off being a Jew, you don't think he would have netted any positive ink out of that, do you? But somehow he can say you categorically dishonest and or immoral people are even worse than atheists and people hold it up like a badge of progressive honor. I, I mean, I guess that the underlying thought he's trying to express is semi-good, right? I mean, he's trying to reach out to his own flock and say, hey, stop doing dishonest shit. You're making us look bad. But when you can't express even that nanoscale iota of self-serving morality without throwing a billion atheists under the bus, should anybody really be applauding your effort? A atheist, often at least moderately better than money launderers. Probably not the theme of reason con this year, if I had to guess. And in a sense, I understand this, right? I, I mean, a backhanded compliment to atheists ranks substantially higher on the morality scale than actions that directly lead to fully preventable child rape. And if you want to say something nice about the Pope, that's really the bar you're trying to get over. But if that's the case, why the fuck would you be trying to say anything nice about him? You don't see news stories about how generous Jerry Sandusky is when the other inmates run out of shampoo, and there's a reason for that. I've been screaming about this ridiculous double standard for years now. On the one hand, he's sheltering Cardinal Pell, but on the other hand, he hugged a deformed guy and didn't throw up. How the fuck are those the two hands? That's less of a scale and more of a trebuchet. Why not run a weekly list of all the kids not raped by the Catholic Church, guys? Or run headlines like, Pope Francis never whips orphans, or some of Pope's best friends are black. Look, this is more than a negligent insult. It portrays a profoundly bigoted worldview that just assumes some association between godlessness and immorality. He's catering to a stereotype that makes life dangerous in some places and deadly in others. And every media outlet who covered this with a rosy tint was doing the same fucking thing. If you don't assume that atheists are immoral, the proclamation makes no sense. And yet it seemed to make perfect sense to an awful lot of people. But for the record, as much of a dick thing to say as it was, it was also correct. You are definitely better off as an atheist than as a hypocritical Catholic. It's just that the same is true if you subtract the word hypocritical. I mean, let's talk morals here. A moral person would not try to keep condoms out of Africa. 
A moral person would not demonize birth control. A moral person wouldn't invest money opposing marriage equality referendums. And a moral person damn sure wouldn't continue to fund an institution after decades of unambiguous evidence show that their primary global function is keeping child rapists safe from punishment. You show me a moral Catholic and I'll show you a hypocrite.